Welcome to The Long Shot. It is a podcast. I am one of your hosts. My name is hosts. My name is Sean Conroy. The other host here today is Amber Kenny, who is the only other host at this point. Hello. It, it felt like the record sort of skipped for a I second. I couldn't say the word <laughs> hosts for some reason. It's it's not a tough. hard word, but it's tough. somehow. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine the other night. This is a good word for that. Hosts. That sounds right, right? The way I said that. Hosts. hosts. Yeah, but then it also, if you think about it too much, it sounds like so many, it's like S's every direction. Right, but I mean, I'm pronouncing that word correctly. Correct. Yes. Hosts. So I was speaking with a friend of mine the other night who reminded me that when I went, and I'm sure I've talked about this, I'm going to tell a lot of stories today that I've told before on the show. Great. I I feel like that's what this podcast is now. Right. Uh, occasionally we've only, lived, we, we've only lived one life but we've right. done like nine thousand episodes so right occasionally something new happens and we talk about it but for yeah. the most part it's we're but recapping like, oh, God, <laughs> here we go with that again um but i was reminded that when i went to interview for my job as a school teacher before i even started so this was decades ago so mm-hmm. long ago Um, I had to go to a building in New York City, a famous building, which was... 30 Rockefeller Center. (laughs) (laughs) That's where the Board of Education was. Yes, (laughs) Studio 8H. Uh, No, it was 110 Livingston Street was the Board of Education building for for like 50 years, I think. Um, And that was where everything... That was where the bureaucracy was. That was where everything happened. So whenever anything was going on, you had to go to 110 Livingston Street. So... I was going to be interviewed to see if it was okay for me to become uh, a temporary substitute teacher. I'm just moving this so that my entire head is. I know I'm going to be like a glow machine, but it is what it is. We're recording in the daytime. That's, uh, you know, we're mixing it up. What happens? Um, But I went to 110 Livingston Street for this interview. And in the interview, the guy who I was interviewing with, who I would assume was a former teacher himself or a current teacher who was serving in some kind of capacity of bringing new teachers in. He had moved up through the ranks. Or he was being penalized. It could have been Mm -hmm. either of those things. Like he could have been a teacher that they were like, we got to get him away from the kids. kids Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It could have been either of those things. So anyway, we like the guy. We like, (laughs) right. right. We're not going to, you don't get fired, but you got to go to 110 Livingston street. So I went in and he asked me all these questions that were like, Let's say you give the class an assignment and they say, we're not interested in completing that assignment. Or you have two kids who say, we're not interested in completing that assignment. What do you do? And like, I guess there's supposed to be strategies you get in education classes for how to Mm. deal with recalcitrant students or something. Well, and I... I Go ahead. Well, well, I was going to say, I feel like in that instance, there's like the answer you're supposed to say for the test and then what you actually do in real life which is like okay not everyone right. does the homework like i don't know what to and tell you and it depends you. on the student <laughs> it's like and, there's a million yeah. different things yeah. that could you know it it's it's not a it's not a binary situation there's tons of variables always in anything like that this guy did say you know he said he said the question then he goes i know what i would do i would slap both of them across the mouth and then you know no, he didn't say that, but uh, <laughs> <That's> scary. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't learned anything. But anyway, he so he asked me all these questions. And then at the end of the whole interview, so I was basically done. Mm-hmm. He said, by the way, I do just have to tell you one more thing. And I was like, yes. <laughs> one more thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> He goes, you know, at some point you'll have to take speech lessons to correct your terrible speech impediment, right? And I was like, I'm sorry, come again? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And he was completely serious. He was like, yeah, you, I don't know if you're aware of this, but you have a horrible lisp that makes listening to you extremely difficult. It's very distracting when you're talking because your lisp is so overwhelming. That's crazy. And I was like, inside, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. 
And he was like, yeah, let me, let me, I can see that you're not totally understanding what I'm saying because probably people have been too polite to tell you this before, but let me just show you here. I'm going to draw. And he took his New York times and he started drawing a human throat and mouth, like a side view. Okay. He's like, so when a normal person says the letter S. Normal is tough to to start off with. (laughs) Yeah. When, but that was literally what he said. Like when a normal person says the letter S, this is where their tongue goes and that's where it's supposed to go. So it sounds okay. Now, when you say the letter S, your tongue goes way up here into your teeth and it doesn't sound like an S at all. It sounds like something completely different. So it just, it grates on the ears. It's very hard to listen to. And like, first of all, I was... 22 at right. the time or whatever. Well, you're like, thank you. I will be insecure about this the rest of my life. Not even that. I was like in my head going, I have been told that I have a mellifluous speaking voice my entire life. Like this is a thing that people have said to me over and over again, that public speaking is something I do fairly well. Right. So what's going on right now? What's happening? Right. Right. This person is doing something very strange. Right. And so it wasn't insecurity. It was just anger. Like I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? I feel like that's, that's uh, the difference between me and you. (laughs) (laughs) I would have just been like, same, same, well, same, same. but to be but, fair, you also have a horrible lisp. In sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Um, but also, it would be one thing if you were going to a speech therapist or a speech expert. Like this felt like a very, by the way, like right. bonus. <laughs> I'm just helping you out, pal. Yeah, yeah, I'm just letting you know. And so after that, so I did think, like, because in some regards, you're right. You go is he onto something like right. is this thing that I've never been aware of? And I just rejected that ultimately out of hand. I was like, no, I would know. Like, I know what a lisp is. I can hear it. I've listened to myself on tape. I know what I sound like. I don't right. have a lisp. I can say the word hosts without it <laughs> being not that if I had a lisp, that would make me a terrible person, right. but I don't. So why is he doing this? So, I actually used to talk about this in the reason this guy brought it up to me in conversation the other night was because he is a teacher and he had never seen my show about being a teacher. He was like, Mm. you won't believe this, but I, this is a friend of mine from college. He was like, I am like the one person that should see this show and I've never seen it. And he said, you, you told this story that you told me was in the show. And I was like, yeah, it was ultimately cut. But anyway, in the show, when I told that story, the context I put it in was ultimately I realized what this guy was doing was trying to make me upset in a way that perhaps highlighted your, well, would stimulate the same conditions that would be in a classroom. So to see how I would behave under bizarre pressure from someone. You know, like my brain just tried to logic it into making sense. This is part of the test somehow. That this is part of the test. I now it's years and years later. Like I haven't done that show in 20 years. And I'm like, no, that guy was just fucking crazy. Like he was just a crazy person. And that was just a weird way for him to try to make me feel bad in that interview after it was over. And that's the fucking world we live in, you know, that there's people, you know, Gary is sitting at 110 Livingston Street just trying to fuck up people's lives. I don't know. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's that malicious, Mm -hmm. but I think he is a dude who is wrongfully obsessed with diction like he probably it it wasn't a podcast because that was before podcast but it was the equivalent of like he heard a fascinating detail about tongue placement on a podcast mm-hmm. and then like thought he was now a diction expert you know like 
I think he. But over- what you're doing, what you're doing, is you're saying he did actually hear a lisp in my voice. No, I, I'm. Well, he was looking for something mm-hmm. so that he can talk about. Like, here's the tongue placement. I don't know. Maybe don't know. maybe you're right. I my belief now has come around mm. to he was just a huge fucking asshole who was mm. trying to disrupt my life in some way. <laughs> I mean, it was it was it was gaslight. I mean, that's gaslight. You know, yeah. like that's literally gaslighting is you're crazy because you never heard this before. This right. thing that doesn't actually exist. Um, it's so hard for me to understand gaslighting, but I think I'm starting to get it after all these years. <laughs> Finally. Uh, all right. So we always start the show with a segment that we like to call checking in. So let's start today with Amber. What's going on? Well, it's been several weeks. Quite, quite some time. Yeah. Got together. Yeah. So there's a lot. Um, it's too bad Jamie's not here because if, if it had been three weeks, he could go like, I made baked vegetables <laughs> but he's not here that's the good old days uh so what's going on Amber? well um to your point this is like old news at this point but um i wanted to talk about my birthday slash thanksgiving um because it is it was the same day this year and happy birthday, by the way and happy thank birthday. you thank you thank you um I woke up and I did something that I've wanted to do for years. I ran the Los Angeles Turkey Trot on Thanksgiving morning. Nice. Um, it, it was a 5K in downtown mm-hmm. Los Angeles. And um, it was really, it was really fun. It was like, it might be something that I just like add as a tradition to for me. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it just felt like, oh, it, um, I feel like adult is is realizing that holidays you have to make them something they don't, yeah. and um, that is a way for it to feel like oh this is a th- special day this is Thanksgiving like, and now the traditional running of the five k <laughs> yeah well there's people dressed as turkeys like it was very mm-hmm. silly and dumb but I have not been running I um I like. I'm sure there's an element of it that people were like, oh, we can walk this, right? Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, but uh, I haven't been running. If anything, I kind of went the opposite way. I got hyper vigilant about after having COVID about like doing exertion and inflammation and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so I... <laughs> This is a roundabout justification of like, I am out of shape. But um, beforehand, I was like, okay, I, a couple times I did a, because a, a, a 5K is just over three miles. It's not crazy. It's not something that you need to train for forever. But I wanted to make sure that do, I could. You can do a 5K, you can do a 5K training program in under 20 weeks. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so I did a couple 5k runs like before this. Yeah. But not, like, not all on Thanksgiving day. No, no, no. But, but literally a couple and they were slow, but I was like, I did it. Like I just needed to prove that I could physically. They were slow, but were they steady? Yeah, they're pretty steady. Because I've heard that slow and steady is how you win that Thanksgiving race. I didn't win. Oh, it's so crazy. It's so it. crazy. Um, but then we got the, and I did <laughs> most of my training. <laughs> it's not all was in my apartment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would like put on a TV show and then just like run back and forth in my apartment right. until I got to 5k. So um, once I got to the race. Now you have oh, a bunch of sprinters that train there as well, correct? In my apartment? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, A, the, the race didn't start till 8 a.m. And I was like, luxury, like, great, let's do this. Didn't start uh, till 8 a.m. to me, it's like a nightmare. <laughs> but they were like, get there early so right. that you could like register. And I'm an idiot and I listened to them. So I was there by like 7 a.m. on the dot. Mm-hmm. And I I was like fully registered, had my bib, had my t-shirt, and was like 
now I just have to stand in cold downtown Los Angeles for an hour. Like, why did I do this to myself? Um, and that's hard. That's hard. I mean, I, you know, that, that waiting before the race starts when it's freezing cold and there's not really anything. To do. I don't know if it was, was it freezing? That it was day? pretty cold. It was pretty cold. Um, I also walked smudgy before that. Mm. And I, in my head, I was like, smudgy buddy, we're going to go on kind of a short walk. Cause I'm going to run a 5k. So like, don't worry. We're not going to go on a long pier for our, our short <laughs> walk. But somehow like I was excited and worried about waking up in time. It was kind of like airport um, sleep where I kept waking up because I was so paranoid about sleeping. I've done that like four race. times this week, by the way, not related <laughs> to airport, just related to other things where right. I'm like, I know I have to be up by, and it's it's not even like 7 a.m. It's like, I have to be up by 11 a.m. tomorrow, so I'm not going to be able to fall asleep tonight. <laughs> right. So I was doing that. So anyway, <laughs> point is, Smudgy and I went on like an extremely long walk. Mm-hmm. And then I ran a five, like, I basically walked a 5K and then. Um, Sprinted a 5K. Well, I. Mm, 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 uh, <laughs> So then we get there and I'm like, great, this is going to be great. I'm like, I'm so in shape. I've proved to myself those two times in my apartment while watching The Real Housewives. Like, like I'm a real athlete. Like, let's do this. And um, when we when the race started, I was like, ooh, uh, running outside's a little bit different. And also, the entire first mile was uphill. <laughs> so I... I um, and you're jammed in with a bunch of other people. Yeah, first yeah. and and like again, cement is different than like in my socks in my living room. Like everything was just different. Um, you also then, keep your apartment's oxygen concentration oh, way def- higher than the outside definitely, atmosphere. Definitely. Well, and someone's like always ninety percent oxygen in your apartment. Yeah. Oh man, that would be incredible. Um, <laughs> And it was my 40th birthday. It was the morning of my 40th birthday. Like, I haven't talked to a soul. I walked smudgy. And um, so Jeff didn't do the race with you. No, no, no. It was just me. Um, and so, like, Pussy. it starts, and I'm like, immediately, like, I can't do this. Like, I, I can't do this, you said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't do this. Time out. Time out. <laughs> <laughs> and I, in my head I was like was this a huge mistake because I was like oh I'll start my 40s like running this race like feeling really good about myself and good in my body and I was like am I about to prove the exact opposite that like I'm old and decrepit and I can't do anything um but I had like a a, a workout mix going I actually brought my my What's on the mix? Headphones. You will hate every single thing of it. It's just horrible dance music, but mm. it, it it gets you moving. But um, but I was like, Amber, no, like, no, 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 no. Like, this is not going to be a like you're beating yourself up. It's just, just a 5k. It's not a <laughs> metaphor for your 40s that you're running uphill and you can't do it. Right. And also, like, this is fun and <laughs> it's okay and you can walk like to your point earlier like so i i walked most of the first mile and then once it was flat or or a downhill i was uh-huh. i jogged again and i i did i finished and it was fine but it was really funny at the beginning i was like oh no <laughs> what did i do <laughs> what did i do um they, was it was it one of those courses where you like go out a certain distance and then come back so that as you're still going out, there's a bunch <laughs> of people coming oh, back the other There way? are people who like finished the entire race yeah. in like six minutes or something like insane. <laughs> yeah, like I, I I'm sure it, it, it but yeah, I'm like still going up that hill where I'm like, yeah. what am I doing with my life? And they're like crossing the finish right. line. <laughs> um I did when I I went back to my hometown like five years ago for Thanksgiving because I don't usually go on Thanksgiving even though I love being there for Thanksgiving. It's just too goddamn expensive. It's a tough tough travel time. Yeah, and and I did go a few years ago, and several of us did a five k like oh, my fun. brother and two of his kids and I forget who else, but we all ran and it. By the way, talk about it. It was cold here in LA. There, oh, it was like, forget it. Yeah, I don't know, zero maybe uh, Fahrenheit, not Celsius, which is <laughs> worse. Uh, but 
it was one of those courses where you run out a certain distance and then you come back. And so as I was huffing and puffing my way <laughs> out, my, you know, 14 year old niece right. comes trotting back the other way, just like having a casual conversation with three of her friends. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> yeah. yes. she was um, like, so anyway, then I told him and they were running like five <laughs> times as fast as I was. So um, but once it maybe was a metaphor for my 40s mm-hmm. in the sense that like once I let go of like, yeah, Amber, you're not going to win this 5K that you, truth be told, did not train for at all and mm-hmm. haven't run in, in a year. <laughs> um, right. Like, I don't know what magical thinking was going on in your brain, but like, yeah, but you can enjoy it and take it in. And it was a beautiful course through downtown LA and it was a really pretty day with like big blue skies and puffy clouds and um and yeah I was home by I was home by like 8 45 I was like in my house by 8 45 and I had already done two 5k's basically I was like I'm a 10k a-. basically right 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 I was like more or less mas o menos um <laughs> so yeah I was pretty hungry and tired but yeah, it was it was it was a fun way to start the day. And then, you know, we sat down and watched the Macy's Day Parade, which I love doing. And it it felt like I had earned it instead of just waking up and laying around all day and then eating right. all day. But you don't have to earn your food. That I mean, that's archaic thinking. You don't I mean, having a lisp is not bad. <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah. That's great. I love that. I love the idea of starting Thanksgiving off because I've done it a few times. I I didn't do it this year, but uh, I think that's I think that's a fun way to do the day. You know? Yeah, it was it was really, and it's just fun seeing so many people and so many different walks of life. Because I was by far not the last person in the race. I was not, mm-hmm. but that was the other weird thing, Sean. It because when I got my results back, they um. It was like I was ranked. You were in a new category. By women in their 40s. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, wow, we're doing yeah. this already. We're just going right into it. <laughs> um, and and I got a picture back, which I should figure out. Maybe if we take a break, I will figure out yeah. a way to get it on my computer and put it up. Um, I didn't buy it. It's like watermarked. But mm-hmm. it is. it makes me laugh crying um, because... I appear to be going zero miles per hour. I think mm-hmm. like there's zero movement in my body, but my face is, I am maxing out. <laughs> I like that it makes you laugh crying instead of cry laughing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Like you're thing. like, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I feel, it feels like there's a lot to talk about. Now, but, let me ask uh, you this. Mm-hmm. You did this 5K. Mm-hmm. Does it feel like something you want to do more of or no? Um, well, I said that I want to do more turkey trots, but like you mean like 5Ks in particular, like training, running, running jogging, like did it did it did ah. it spark anything in you that you were like I did this once before, I haven't done it for a while, mm-hmm. maybe this is something I would like to do again. This is this is going to be such like a a Switzerland middle of the road answer that you're not going to like, but um that reminds me of the boring sports that have been on for the last couple of weeks, but go ahead. Um, I really enjoyed, I like being active and I like being outside. Mm-hmm. So like those are, those go into the yes category. Baseline, yes. <laughs> um, but like, I don't know if I need to be like a runner. Mm-hmm. So that goes into the no category. I'm, I'm asking I'm asking because <laughs> there is a half marathon in mm. Hollywood next October. So it's a long way away. So we got like a, a year to train. Basically. Almost a year. And I have signed up for it. Oh, shit. So I, I have said because I've run half marathons. I've run mm-hmm. full, a full marathon and people ask me about it. And I'm like, I don't know if I ever need to do a full marathon again. Like I just it it's a long way well it's it's a long way and it's also like one of those things where it's a cool accomplishment but then you're like 
physically in pain for three weeks afterwards where a half marathon it's a stretch goal it's like a, a challenge but it's also like it feels like a half doable. marathon is way more it's achievable like, and way less damaging. i would say it's like half as much <laughs> yeah well it bothers me it's always bothered me that it's just called a half marathon like in other words you're uh, failing just by doing it you're not even doing yeah. a full marathon yeah 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 i think it should have its own name but mm-hmm. that's just uh, me uh, anyway uh, like, McCarathon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it should be an Irish event. Um, Have you ever yeah, yourself to McCarathon? Let me think about it. Maybe it's a maybe because I again I do like being outside. I do like being active. It's a long um, way away. Like I said, it's it's very very far. So, although you know how time works, especially when you get to your forties, it's like it's there. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, I'm just putting it out there because that is my plan. We'll see if it happens. You know, it's a long way away and there's all kinds of things that could happen between now and then. But uh, I did register. So we'll see. That is exciting. I, uh, going back to the race, I had, um, like I said, I had my earbuds in and I was listening to music. But I also put on like a a running tracking like GPS app Mm -hmm. so that I, I knew that they would give me results, but just so like I could kind of see how fast I was going. What your splits were. Yeah. You know, always got to be (laughs) leveling up. Um, Second kilometer was way faster (laughs) than the first kilometer, but the third kilometer, you fucking killed it. Fourth kilometer. You started to run out of gas. Fifth kilometer was the, was the home stretch. Well, I was regretting it at the beginning because it would pop on and be like, you've gone a half of a mile. And I'm like, that's it? <laughs> you know, like, right. how? But but it is interesting. Um, running is like time is like life. Is like the world because that, again, that first mile was so hard. It took so, it took like, okay, I'm going to be here forever. This is my life. <laughs> like, <laughs> forget it. But then like the last, like when, when they're like, now you're at two miles, now you're at two and a half miles. I was like, it was like going so fast right. at the end and like easy. The thing was like, oh, by the way, you're done, fucker. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I will think about the half marathon. Is there like a theme? You know how there's like rock and roll half marathons or. I don't think so. I think it's just Hollywood. Like it's it's the first one in Hollywood. Like they're oh. they're, they're doing a new event in Hollywood. So, so Tom Cruise will be there. Yeah, you Robert. It's going to be Tom Cruise, <laughs> Ving Rhames, and Michael Moriarty. <laughs> <laughs> Is he even still alive? I don't know. Um, but yeah. So so anyway, yeah. Think about it. That's okay. like that's like half marathon is like. 90k i think (laughs) it's so funny to think of things in k Uh, (laughs) it makes more sense we should be on that system but that's a joke i've been trying to do in stand-up recently and i haven't been able to get it to work but like that i would love to hear a southern politician say something that makes sense on tv Uh recently i've started aiming it at john kennedy not the good kennedy the bad kennedy Uh uh but that they would say and what they what i have them saying in the bit is we should switch the metric system it just makes <laughs> way more sense <laughs> like imagine somebody from the senate standing up and going i would like to call it to my colleagues attention that it is time that the united <laughs> states switched to the metric system i love it um, no nobody loves it it's still in progress <laughs> Uh, well, that's great. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Uh, uh, I love that you ran a 5k that inspires me. There was a 10k that day too. And I'm so glad I wasn't. There was probably a 1k too, right? Well, there was, there was a 5k, a 10k, and then like a waddle run for kids. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm so glad. I think to kids to go. (laughs) They don't care. (laughs) They don't, they don't get it. But, um, I'm really glad the day I signed up, I wasn't like, I can do 10K. Like, I, 5K right. was perfect. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. It's enough to work up a little appetite for your turkey. Yeah. Uh, so what else? Anything else? Well, okay. There's so much. Uh, I knew it. That's why I asked. But I'm like, 
weighing if I just want to save it for the next week when I'm like, well, I just sat at home and worked. So, you know, like <laughs> nothing to talk don't about. Don't save but, it. Don't um, save okay, it. Okay. Don't save it. So Jeff, the day before my birthday came in and was like, I think I'm getting another ear infection. This will be his third this year since Ugh. June. Um, so I keep saying it's like a post COVID thing and people are like, this oh, really? a problem before he's never like adults don't get ear infected. Like right. that's not a thing. Right. Um, and yeah, I keep telling people that, yeah, it's a post COVID thing. And they're like, oh really? I was like, I'm not a doctor. It, like I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> logic. Um, Correlation but, is not causation. <clears throat> True. But so that was a bummer. Cause again, it was the day before my birthday, the day before Thanksgiving. So he like took his ass to urgent care immediately. They pumped him because he had had so many in such a short amount of time. You're talking about the emergency room. He went to the emergency room. Urgent care. What are you talking about? Urgent care. Just kidding. I'm trying to rehash an argument we had like 10 years ago. Oh, I was like, uh, um, that's uh, not the part of the story that I thought we would be like building <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, so he goes to urgent care. Yes. And they he's there a while. It's a nightmare. Yada yada yada. Not my story. Um, but they pump him full of so many antibiotics and like antibacterials and who knows what that um and they gave him a flu shot. So he felt like total garbage mm -hmm. and um and he did all that because we were going on my birthday trip a couple days after my birthday and he wanted to make sure that he was like up and at him for that right. um but it meant any chance you could give me some radiation doctor just really <laughs> knock it out <laughs> but it meant that on thanksgiving proper like i came home from that run and i was and i was a little bit tired and he was like knocked out on the couch mm -hmm. we were we were two bumps on a log and I had plans to go we had plans to go to a friend's house for Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and he he spent the whole day trying to rally and then he's like I, I, I can't I can't do it mm -hmm. um so on my birthday I went to are you kidding me what do you mean you can't do it I did a 5k and a smudgy walk that was 5k <laughs> I did two 5ks <laughs> um I went to Thanksgiving by myself on my 40th birthday and it was fine. With other people, though. With other people, with other people. Yeah, yeah. But, like, that almost made it weird because ever, like. Okay, everybody. It's time for the <laughs> traditional Thanksgiving makeout session with your lover. No, 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 no. Not because of that. Because, like, my best friends that were there knew it was my birthday. But other people, did, like, why would people know it's my birthday? And and, right, right, right. and I'm not going to walk and be like, it's my birthday. <laughs> I'll cry like, if I want to. That's not my style. So it was like this hilarious, like people would be like, where's Jeff? Oh, he's got an ear infection. And then like, oh, it's your birthday. Oh, it's your 40th birthday. Like, like this weird, like them feeling sorry for me, mm -hmm. but it's okay. Like it was a weird vibe. I don't know how to explain it. Or, or like everyone would be like, all right, like let's sit down to our meal and happy birthday, Amber. I'm like, you, you don't have to look at, at least you don't have a list. Yeah. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Um, and I, I, I was like, Jeff, you have to email the thread and say why you're not coming. You like this, you have to, because I cannot, I cannot, it's going to look like we're fighting on my birthday. Like I can't, I can't. He has an ear infection. <laughs> it sounds she, like a lot. She's used that one three times already. <laughs> I know. I know. My grandma died again. Um, <laughs> But it was it was a fun Thanksgiving. It was mellow, and um, I know Jeff was really really sad because he we haven't had a traditional Thanksgiving since 2019. We've mm -hmm. had them just the two of us in 2020 and 2021. So this was going to be our first Thanksgiving in a while. And then he like still has had one. He sat on his couch at home by himself. Son of a bitch. Um, poor guy. But then we did go on this trip for my birthday a couple mm. days later. And boy, oh boy, was it. <laughs> I'm trying to think of um, an entry point of talking about it in an interesting way. Because, like, truly, it was like, it was a, it was a good time. Um, Where did you but, go? 
we went, I rented like um, a house in Monterey County, like way, okay. way, way up north on a winery. And, um, <clears throat> and yeah, it was beautiful. Like I forget that autumn happens places. Like the entire view was just trees that were golden yellow or red or, and, um, it was gorgeous. I kept saying it's very autumnal. And then people would arrive and they'd be like, oh, that is autumnal. Um, and so it wasn't just you and Jeff. You had other people there as well. Yeah, there was there was a couple of close friends. And uh, yeah, and um, I had like enforced themes. The first night was PJ night and we all watched <laughs> a movie together and we ate pizza. Was but it before- hard? Was it hard to enforce that? No, I, that was what was so delightful is like, I, I was like, here are the dress codes. And I was like, we'll see. And then everyone like brought it, mm-hmm. um, including like husbands that like shouldn't buy in. Um, and so the I'm first sure night, if they know what's good for them, the first night was, I tried to come up with themes that weren't like, I wasn't like asking people to wear period corsets and stuff. You know, like, it was like comfy and doable, but so. Everyone was in PJs. It was the cutest fucking thing in the world. And I was getting ready in our room. And Jeff was like, you just need to stay in here for a while. And I was like, okay. And then everybody's just having such a good time. They want to be. And and they don't like themselves. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But when I came out, they had moved all of the furniture in the living room so that there was like one big chair, kind of like throne like directly Mm -hmm. in front of the TV. And then all of the other chairs and couches like around it. And then all of my favorite snacks. It was so cute. And then they're like, okay, we're going to play the movie. And they press play and it wasn't the movie. It was. The oh, they tricked you. <laughs> they tricked me. It was a very, very sweet birthday message from a, a lot of very important people in my life, including you, including Jamie Flam. And it was very sweet and very touching and very surprising. And um, that's what I mean. Like, I'm like, what is my in? Because a story usually has like a conflict. I'm like, it was nice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I liked it. Um, and and yeah, we. Well, I'm sure there was parts of the movie that you were like, oh god, this person, no. <laughs> well, there were, they they tried to surprise me by having cameos from two different housewives because I watch a lot of Real Housewives franchises, mm-hmm. and both people they picked, I was like, I don't know who that is, <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> See, there was conflict. I knew it. And um, the next night was like they were in charge of dinner. I wasn't supposed to know anything about it, but we had to dress up my rules like colorful dance party. And that was going to be the night with like the birthday cake. It was really important for me to have a birthday cake. Having a Thanksgiving birthday, like often there's no cake in sight. It's just mm-hmm. like, yeah, that pumpkin pie is also your birthday cake. Which I like pumpkin pie, but y- you know what I'm saying. Like you always want whatever. Which is ironic else. because the Pilgrims are the ones who invented birthday cake. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um. <clears throat> so yeah. So the next night, I I got ready in my like colorful dress, and um, my girlfriends are they're being insane <laughs> lunatics. They're being absolute mm-hmm. lunatics, and then the um. Surprise comes out. I guess they were talking to Jeff about what kind of food I like. And Jeff told them that I really like soup. So they each made a soup. It was like a smorgasbord of different soups. Mm. But um, so it was funny to have it was like a raucous party, <laughs> just like eating a lot of soup. And um, yeah, my friend Alan kept saying we were soup mad. <laughs> Soup, 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 soup. Like, oh, that's a good soup. Like, it just felt very surreal. And um, we were in this dining room that looked very 70s and weird lighting. And we were just eating a lot of soup. And they were Does like, Does anybody aggressive. want some more soup? Because there's plenty <laughs> more. And it was all very good. But like, they really, um, Lampy in particular, took mm. her soup very seriously. And so there was a point where we took a group photo, which we didn't really do much of because we were all just doing our thing and there wasn't anyone to take group photos so we finally figured out a way to take a group photo it wasn't great but I was like oh can I see and Lampy shows me her phone and she's like okay so 
that's the chili. That's the pea soup. I was like, I don't want to see pictures of the goddamn soup. I just ate it. I want to see the group photo. Like it was very. So funny. what were the soups, by the way? Min- well, and we it was a very specific order that we had to eat them in, but it was um, minestrone, vegetarian, mm-hmm. butternut squash, mm-hmm. pea soup with ham, and then chili. Wow. But it's it's Lampy's famous chili that is honestly unbelievably good and then whitney made. is it soupy or is it not soupy it's not soupy Mm -hmm. uh so i don't are you saying it doesn't count as a soup i'm saying she went outside the lines (laughs) i didn't say it had to be soup that was on them and then whitney made biscuits and it was all really lovely which is not even related to soup well yeah she made she was the non-soup person and yeah and then we had like a dance party it was great it was freaking great And then um, I came home and was like, I don't want to go back to the real world. I'm just now becoming like a person again. I was very demotivated after that. I thought, and I was sort of beating myself up. Like I should be on cloud nine. I should be the most thankful person in the world. I had this beautiful weekend, but I think it's like I used up so much serotonin (laughs) that I was depleted. Um, But I'm, I'm back, baby. I'm in my body again. Welcome back. Thank you. And thank you for being a part of the video. It was honestly so sweet. It was crazy. Well, I was just happy to be asked, you know. <laughs> I was grateful. Um, what else? Anything else? I feel like that's that's enough for now. What's going on with you? What's going on with me? Well, I got some very, very bad news today. Very disappointing news. Uh, which is bad enough. I mean, that's bad when you get bad mm-hmm. news. It's bad news is not good typically, like right. traditionally. It's, it's it's like, oh, that's not what I wanted to know. Mm-hmm. That's like the whole thing about bad news. But this was even, this was like a double whammy because mm-hmm. not only did I get very disappointing news, I got it from somebody that I sh- should have gotten it from somebody else. Like somebody... Mm. The person who gave me the news was not the person who should be telling me the this grapevine news. versus the. It was the person's responsibility to give me the news. They did not give me the news. Another person got in touch with me to give me this news. Like, I was trying to think of a good analogy. It's like, what if you were dating somebody for a long time mm-hmm. and you were like, hey, this feels like it's working? This. I like how we are together. Mm. You know, I, 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 I enjoy it. I think we're good. We know a lot about each other. I was wondering if you would be willing to marry me. Will you marry me is what I'm saying. And, and somebody, the other, and the other person was like, let me get back to you. Let me, let me, let me think about it. I'm not uh-huh. sure. I want to, I, I, I also feel good about this, but I want to, I want to think about it and get back to you. And like, you didn't hear from that person then for two weeks, and you're like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm, I guess, not a great sign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they get back to me when they get back to me, and then you, somebody calls you and goes, "Hey, did you hear Donna's engaged to not you? <laughs> to not you?" And you're like, "What?" Like, yeah. it felt like that. Like, it felt like that mm-hmm. kind of thing, you know. Uh, and and it's just frustrating. It's frustrating. Um, because I thought we would be married and I thought we'd be together for the rest of our lives. Donna. Um, so it's like bad news and then sort of a roundabout way of finding betrayal out. or some not bet- betrayal might be too hard, but like, yeah, like a, a hurtful way of even finding out about the bad news. Right. Uh, so that's, that's been a rough thing. Like I was in a, I was in a meeting when I got, well, no, no, no. So, was in a meeting this morning and got it got a text from somebody that had this bad news in it but it popped up on my screen and it was only half of the text and i was expecting news of some sort and i could tell that this person's text had news in it mm-hmm. but because i was in this meeting i couldn't take time to check and see what the text was so for the next hour while I was in this meeting, oh my God. 
in, in my head, I was like, this could go either way. It's either mm-hmm. way. And human nature being what it is and my humanity being what it is, I was like, I think this could go the right way. So I guess in a sense, it was kind of a triple whammy because I had an hour to stew on the fact that maybe it was going right. Then I found that it was going wrong and I found out from the wrong people. So that's my day so far. Um, that was today. That was this morning. Yeah. Ugh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's not fun. But, you know, there's other things going on in the world that are much more important. So what are you going to do? Um, you know, hopefully by the time this uh, podcast comes out, which I guess will be. So today's Monday. It'll come out on Wednesday. So hopefully by Wednesday, we'll know who is going to win the Senate race in Georgia these days, because that seems like something that is going on in the real world that's a bigger deal than than any news that I might have. And it's insane. It is insane that this is a close race. Like, it doesn't make... I was thinking about it today, and I was like, they're, they're just a couple percentage points apart. And the thing that that proves to me, like, I was like, what if, what if instead of Herschel Walker running for Senate, the Republicans, it's Georgia. So I was like, what if the Republicans put up a, just a peach, (laughs) but it was a registered, like they registered it as a Republican. So it was just a, it was just a fruit piece of fruit. But then I was like, a peach doesn't feel mm. right. So instead, I was like, what if it was a banana? What if the Republicans mm. ran a banana against Raphael Warnock? <laughs> I think it would be as doing well, as well yeah. as Herschel Walker. <laughs> and it would be just as good of a senator as Herschel Walker. Right. It'd be better, honestly. Less damaging. A fucking banana. Yeah. Would be just, yeah, would possibly be a better senator than Herschel Walker. Um, but you know, what are you going to do? That's the guy that he's the guy that they, that they are going for. Um, I don't know. I mean, I have all kinds of political nonsense to talk about, but that's not interesting. Uh, I do think it's about time that, you know, well, I do think it's about time that we got to the bottom of the whole rigging of the election with the Hunter laptop thing. Oh Uh, my God. If people had seen his dick, they would have definitely voted against Joe Biden. Like, you look at that guy's dick, and you're like, I don't want that dick anywhere near the White House. That's crazy. So, that did cost Trump the election. Um, And, sorry, but this is the last thing I'll talk about in terms of that stuff. I was talking before about how it's so much easier now for me to understand what gaslighting is. Like, it took me a while Mm -hmm. to to figure that out. (laughs) I saw... I'm sure you saw this thing that Trump put out, I don't know, two nights ago about we need to get rid of the Constitution or whatever it was. We need to abolish the Constitution because that's the reason that they were able to throw the election. So people people reacted to that, got very upset, rightfully so. Then on the Sunday morning news shows, people were kind of pussyfooting around it a little bit. Like instead of saying... Like he's got some points. <laughs> well, no, 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 not, not even that. But they were like, no, no, they just changed what he said. They were like, uh. like George Stephanopoulos was like, Trump advocated suspending the Constitution, and he didn't advocate suspending it. Mm-hmm. He advocated getting rid of it completely. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, George Stephanopoulos felt like he had to like soften Stop that it. a little yeah. bit when he was talking to Republican politicians, who, by the way, didn't respond in any way. But anyway, then people reacted to that and they were like, why don't they say what Trump really said? Please say what Trump really said. He really said abolish it. So today I saw that Trump put out a statement saying the mainstream media is trying to convince you that I said we should get rid of the Constitution. I never said that. That is not at all anything I ever said. And I'm like, oh, okay, that is just pure, that, yeah. like, that's oh, no. the purest that's, form of gaslighting. Yeah, that's is like, Trump's whole deal. Is I gaslighting. said this one thing, now I'm saying I didn't say that thing. Mm-hmm. Here are those two statements side by side. because like touching he, each other. He, yeah. wrote, he wrote both of them. Like, he didn't even just say them out loud. So, you know, because he's very good when he's talking at going, like, 
I think we maybe want, uh, there's something we should think about as far as just get rid of, I'm not saying yes, but many people are saying we should get many rid of the people. Constitution. Yeah. And that's an idea that there are some people who think that idea, that idea, I, that idea is my, I think there's, and so then he can later say, no, I never said that because I just said such a fucking rambling. word salad. Yeah. yeah. But this was like actual statements from his truth social thing that he wrote himself and put up. And you could tell he wrote it because of the weird capitalization and grammar <laughs> stuff. Um, and he was like, no, I never said that. Nope. Sorry. Oh and I'm God. just like, the fuck do you do? Yeah. You know, like, I don't know what, I don't know what the answer is because the, the whole other thing that we haven't even talked about is all the crazy Kanye West, Nick Fuentes, Nazi anti-Semitism Thanksgiving dinner with Donald Trump, like all of that shit. And at a certain point, it just becomes overwhelming. Like, how do you, how do you fight against that? You know? Um, it's like, you're, you're back on your heels all the time going, no, 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 that's not, no, no, no. And people are just saying crazy shit. And what can you do? I mean, you have to, you have to try, but it is completely out of hand at this. It's point. so crazy. Yeah. Oh God. Well, at least those guys didn't get, you know, find out that the person they proposed marriage to was had decided to get engaged to somebody else just <laughs> since you asked them to marry you. Like they didn't even fucking Donna. Um, all right, let's do uh, let's do uh, parting shots and then we'll uh... let's do a quick break and then I'll do parting okay. shots. I just have to run to the restroom. Great. So I'll be right back. Yes. I'm pausing. <laughs> okay. We're back. You're listening to The Long Shot. We're going to do a stretched out long version oh, of <laughs> parting shots. Just take our time with it and really uh, delve into some topics Just that we ruminate. don't really get to. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I have, I, I'll, I'll be very quick. I, I, my TV broke uh right before thanksgiving i don't know if no. I mentioned that yeah like one day i was watching it and all of a sudden the screen just went black and you could still hear what they were saying but the screen was black and i was like uh -oh. this doesn't seem good so of course i'm googling it and it's like oh the dreaded black screen like there's all kinds of like doom saying I don't <laughs> sounds like pirates yeah. <laughs> Arr, you got the black screen laddie. that's why i wear one eye patches so that when the screen goes black i can still see what it says um but i uh i did end up taking it in to get repaired and it turns out what happens with these LCD TVs or LED, whatever the fuck they are, is that a couple of the lights, a couple of the bulbs blow out and then all the bulbs go out. So like a Christmas happen. tree. And I got that fixed. Unfortunately, I don't know exactly what happened, but when the guy repaired it, I don't know how to explain it except to say that the lights are a little too bright. So there's like little circles on the TV. When oh, I'm you watched. were able to get it fixed. You didn't have to get a new one. I was able to get it fixed. Although ultimately I feel like I should have bought a new one because it cost a couple hundred dollars to get it fixed. And it would have been like a couple hundred dollars more than that to get a brand new one that would have been just as good or better. Right. But because the lights are replacement lights, there's like a little bit of extra light in there. So there's like, there's like just in certain colors on the screen. Like if the screen is all black, you can see little round circles all the way across. And sometimes, anyway, what it feels like is sometimes I'm watching my TV through a chain link fence. <laughs> like that's the best. It's crazy. <laughs> Because I'm focused on the screen, but you can uh -huh. kind of see the chain links in the foreground, you know? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but I say all that because I want to recommend, cause you know, all I do is watch fucking TV and recommend TV shows, but I want to recommend two shows in case people haven't seen them yet. The first one is a show on the Disney plus series of networks, which <laughs> I only have because I stole it from somebody. Uh, and it's a show called Andor. Do you know this show? Andor? I've, I've heard of it. It's in the star Wars universe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think. Like Star Wars was, as with any average male my age, Star Wars was like a life shaping experience for me when I saw it in the totally. theater. Nothing has ever lived up to it since then. None of the properties that they have made since then. I mean, Empire Strikes Back was good, but it wasn't Star Wars. Hmm. Return of the Jedi was, even when I was a kid, I was like, yeah, it was okay, but it was kind of silly. Um, and then they went into that whole Phantom Menace thing, all yeah. that shit. Uh, nothing has ever, in my mind, lived up to that. And Andor is fucking incredible. Wow. Like, the writing is amazing. It's just there's so many great things about it. And it's, I think it's 12 episodes. The 10th episode of the se- the first season of Andor is like one of the best episodes of television I've ever seen. Wow, 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 wow. Um, can you hear that? It's like dogs howling outside my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only faintly. They have they have pit fights outside. Uh, <laughs> Conan the Barbarians out there. Um, so that's one thing. And then the second thing is a show which I'm sure I've recommended before, but it just started season two, and it's called Slow Horses. Oh yeah, that's on Apple Plus. I've it's seen an the Apple Plus show. The key art. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a spy show, which I'm you know is right up my alley, and and it's great. Gary Oldman and the whole cast is really really good. Although Gary Oldman's really the only one that is somebody everybody would know. Um, there's there's a woman in it who's who's great also. Uh, Kristen Kristen Scott Thomas who Oh yeah. She was in the English a, patient. Right, but she's a much less she's important, but she's not like a main character. But anyway, it's, she it's was also really, in um she was the like ingenue in a prince movie. Really? Yeah, yeah. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's so crazy and so good. I mean, not good, but good. It's black and white. It's like it's Prince, like peak, like when doves he's, cry. He's a genius, but it's no, it's like it's like a period piece in the thirties, but it's still Prince. It's oh, very... ch- under the cherry moon. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. I didn't she's, know she was in that. She's the ingenue. Fun fact. So anyway, that's my parting shot: is watch <laughs> Andor and watch and and watch fucking Andor all the way through because it will be worth it ultimately. Slow Horses has just started. They've showed two episodes so far. Also, oh, one more show that I really am enjoying is um, Fleischman is in Trouble. I'm watching that. I'm very much enjoying that as well. Yeah. It's really good. I was, um, Jeff at first was like, I don't want to watch that. I thought he thought it was just going to be like divorced people fighting, mm-hmm. but it's not like that. It's it's an interesting exploration of relationships. Yes. And, 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 point and of done view. in a narratively yeah. interesting way. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I would recommend that too. Cool. Um, uh, so my, Amber, parting shots. Parting shots. Because we got to keep this moving. Let's go, go, go. Well, first, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> I have the photo. It is so embarrassing. <laughs> oh my God. I can't believe I'm sharing this publicly because also it was cold. So I wore like a windbreaker and then we got a t-shirt and it was, um, did you put the t-shirt on over the windbreaker? Exactly. And nice. so it's like the least flattering Always a good look. Possible thing. Um, <laughs> but see, like, if you check out the legs, it looks like I'm basically stopped. It looks like I'm. <laughs> You've got both feet on the ground, which <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah. Not, but my face looks like I am exerting all of the, the exertion I could possibly exert. Let's, you uh, could just be rocking back and forth in one spot. <laughs> and I have too much sunscreen on. It's like, it's just a great. Those lines are the watermark. Is that correct? Yes. 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 Because I was like, that is not speed, is it? No, like, <laughs> I'm going so fast. <laughs> like you're going cartoonishly fast? No, I, I am stopped. I'm like, it looks like I'm, <laughs> I might be just stretching, to right, be honest. Right. <laughs> um, so that made me laugh really hard. 
uh, athlete extraordinaire, Amber Kenny. Um, the other thing is we got a Christmas tree. I don't know if I talked about this on the podcast. I don't think mm-hmm. so because we haven't. We got a fake Christmas tree, but it's like six feet tall. It looks Whoa. like it looks like a real tree. We haven't had like an actual Christmas tree basically ever. We had like one, you know, like a mm-hmm. tabletop one. Um, so that's really fun. And I have like, I think you can see there's holly on. Colombo, I have my garland up in yeah at my office. Like I'm, I'm you're going I, for it. I don't feel Christmassy, but I'm like trying to brainwash myself into feeling Christmassy. Mm. We have because it's a fake tree. We have candles that smell like pine going at night. It's, oh, nice. Um, we're 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 trying. We're getting there. So Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Merry Merry Christmas. I mean, it's December. You know. I know. I know. I we put this up a week before Thanksgiving. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I wanted to come home for my trip and feel like it's, it's Christmas, Christmas now. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I that. recorded last week an episode of a podcast that is the Christmas Day episode. So that was kind of weird to like. Oh, funny. Sit there and go like, boy, the fire is really crackling <laughs> over there. What a way to spend Christmas Day <laughs> when it was like middle of November, basically. Right. Right. Um. So. I get it. I get where you're coming from. Uh, Folks, this has been the long shot. It is uh, almost Christmas time. So Merry Christmas. Be good to each other. Happy New Year. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. The whole nine yards. Thank you for listening to the long shot. We will see you next time. Bye. Hey, everybody, just wanted to add this little ad thing, addendum. Uh, Amber and I are going to take a bit of a break in recording from now until the beginning of the new year. Things get a little hectic during December. I don't know if that's your experience, but certainly that's my experience and Amber's experience. Lots of we're both so social. We have lots of. Christmas parties to go to, lots of events to attend, a lot of ice skating to do, sleigh riding. So we are going to take a a bit of a recording break. Um, 2022 has been great. The world is starting to get back on track. We can only imagine what's going to happen in 2023, and we will see you then. And I should say, by the way, that we may... Uh, during the next several weeks, re-release some old episodes. So maybe that'll be some fun we'll have. That'll be something to look for. And uh, hopefully that's going to work out. We're trying to get copyrights and legal, you know, everything signed, sealed, and delivered. We'll see what happens. Um, So that's it. We will see you soon. Thank you for listening and keep listening and keep being thanked. You said it's somebody else's song. Just something that you learned the other afternoon. Well, I was at home sleeping on the couch in front of the TV. I know that's not your favorite place for me to be. But it's mine But if your lips are any softer I'd fall right through If your lips are any softer I'd fall right through If your lips are any softer I'd fall right through And if your lips are any softer I'd fall right through If your lips are any softer I'd fall right through If your lips are any softer I'd fall right through So I'm packing your bags for the morning the morning will take all my time And put it back where it needs to be Then I'm bringing you back to Nashville But that doesn't mean 